adapting to the local mar market and audience is a difficult challenge that creators face a lot of research is done to ensure that you are meeting the consumer with the content that they wish to consume and in our and we in our next conversation we'd like to understand how you with well directed and focused strategy this you can enter local market and deliver results we would like to welcome on screen mr raman kalra entertainment media and sports advisory leader pwc india in conversation with mr rohit jain managing director south asia lions gate i give you the stage please can thank you varun thank you so much for uh, you know for having us on the panel and uh, a very very good afternoon to all the audience and uh, a dear very dear friend rohit welcome rohit to a uh, So hopefully some exciting 30 minutes of discussion between us here yeah. long time to chat but uh, you know i hope everybody who's listening to us all our friends uh, you know they're all doing well their friends family are all safe and healthy i think that's a that's a terrific note to start rohit i'm glad you brought it up so so for everybody's uh, you know as uh, as varun already introduced i i lead the media entertainment and sports advisory practice for pwc consulting in india I have with me uh, today Rohit. Uh, Rohit uh, is the managing director for Lionsgate in South Asia. Uh, a veteran in media industry, had been leading uh, video on D2H for a long time, and actually that was the time Rohit and I first got to know you more closer uh, and we started talking. So uh, I think very apt topic. Uh, uh, if I uh, Rohit, if I put it in like in 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 this fashion that uh, Lionsgate made a, a quieter entry into the Indian market. very quietly you know expanded uh, its wings you know in the nation and people i'm i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people on the call today might still not know that how much reach you have already generated you know, and how successful you are so i think uh, uh, while while you know lionsgate is is a is a young studio as you guys like to call yourself i think 97 founded in 97 a young hollywood studio a leading global content player so there is a, there is a larger play which is which is coming out of it uh you you know you you guys decided to enter into the indian market about almost about a year back it's been a year now it's been yeah, just so a year. you just just finished a year i think in august how would you how would you sum up uh, a good one year in the indian market for landscape if we you know on on, on a starting note yeah. no at a starting note i think just from a year gone by couldn't be more happier uh, you know like i said we we've gone on a slightly different trajectory compared to everybody else i think i think while the world has always gone out b2c and then looked at collaborations and b2b we've done the reverse uh, as a new entrant also in the indian market from a brand point of view not just ott uh, you know it's allowed us to sort of settle into the market you know understand the consumption patterns sort of study various things um and while doing things in the palm so i think it's allowed us to sort of be a little more seamless into our entry into the market and uh, you know so it's been a great year yeah. you know we started uh, in august last year exactly 14th of august uh, collaborating with vodafone uh, and from there we've gone straight to strength you know we collaborated then went uh, with atel for their telco we collaborated with uh, jio for fiber to home uh we just went live with the uh, atel on the hybrid boxes uh and more importantly this one year has allowed us to understand the consumption patterns what can you know the consumers how they're taking it up um and you know we're going all out uh early november early to mid november we should go all out with a b2c uh yeah so i'll, I'll come to that that's uh, that's going to be a good, that's going to be a good discussion you know and i'm sure a lot of people must be very keenly waiting to hear from you Uh, and also look forward to it what you do in in b2c but but before we jump out on the b2c roith uh, i think one uh, you know you you are actually uh, delivering experiences of a uh, good solid hollywood content to the indian audience and dubbed in a lot of indian languages like you know for somebody to imagine watching rambo in bhojpuri i i i could stop you know i, I couldn't stop laughing in my own mind that you know what would rambo be saying in bhojpuri so i think it could be a different experience altogether and and it is so important you know a, a good a uh, very successful global content 
being delivered to the taste of the local audiences in regional, you know, uh, really expanding the reach out of that. How, how has been this experience for you guys of, of multilingual Indian languages, uh, you know, expansion on the Hollywood content? Has this been taken very well by, by people? Oh, that's been phenomenal. I think, I, I think we probably see a good, you know, a good 40, 50 person jump purely on account of our regional reach. Very uh, good. You know, in a market like India, uh, you know, and I ran PTV before Lionsgate for eight, 10 years. Uh, I think there are two things we've always sort of uh, valued a lot. And one is just the importance of distribution in a market like India and the complexities of distribution and need mm-hmm. to reach out to customer through multiple ways and means. Um, and the second is relevance, relevance from a language point of view. Uh, and I think a lot of Indian audiences love the Hollywood, you know, the large screen, your Rambos and, yeah. you know, John Wicks of, uh, of Hollywood. La La Land, for example, yeah. Uh, but uh, I think what we sometimes we, we sometimes confuse us to be a, from an India English speaking country to English consuming country, right? We are a we are an English speaking country, not necessarily an English consuming at a mass level, right? That's a good statement, yeah. Uh, and I think the moment you sort of dub it, uh, and we've seen that across multiple languages, right? I think I think almost thirty percent of what today movie Hindi movie channels run. Mm. Uh, are South Indian dub movies. Um, there's probably another 20, 25 person that's dubbed from Hollywood. So, mm. so we we you know we enjoy different cultures, different language, sort of different different content. Uh, just making it in your own language dub makes it a little more relevant and interesting for consumers to follow and watch. I am honest about it. I'm actually keen to. For the sake of seeing how the experience is, I'm keen to watch Ramu in Bhojpuri once, and I will certainly no, watch it once. Uh, and we'll never know till we experiment, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I think what's the no-brainer when we started, um, Raman, we started with the obvious Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Marathi, all of those. Uh, but you know, we obviously want to continue to experiment uh, and and you know see what we may not know. I know, I know. So, so sticking on the content uh, part of discussion, Rohit, uh, right now, uh, a good solid English Hollywood content consumed, delivered and consumed in English. The same content dubbed and delivered and consumed in multiple Indian languages, which we you know just spoke about. In the whole uh, strategy for India, uh, how do you see the need of locally produced local content, local storylines? Uh, where does that feature in in landscape India plans? Does that does that come right on top or uh, not as much right now? No, that uh, I I think it's an important part. Uh, it's it's certainly an important part. You know, we have an exciting slate of our original content that should come in in the year one. But mm. I think the way we look at it is slightly different. We're looking at it as great content at the end of the day, respective of language. And I think I think each platform probably looks at it a little differently, right? Uh, you look at today, probably somebody like a Netflix, uh, the reality is more, you know, people watch probably more English uh, mm. or I'd say international languages, non-Indian languages there, right? We're suddenly finding people are watching Spanish, Turkish, French, mm. all kind of languages over there, right? Because there's always affinity for great content uh, versus somebody like an Amazon is probably a little more tightly built on Indian content, right? Uh, I think the way we're building it is, you know, we're trying to, you know, our, our intention is to curate, curate great quality content. Um, of course, Indian stories uh, are an important part of that because there are great Indian stories to be told. Uh, but, but we, you know, for us, it really comes down to just having a curation of great content, right? Hmm. Uh, also, which goes back to Genesis of Lions, you know, so maybe taking a step back, uh, the way, you know, our, our OTT, uh, you know, globally sort of branded as stars or, or stars play in international markets. Uh, in India, we decided to launch it as Lionsgate Play. I think outside of, I'd say Netflix, Apple, Amazon, we're probably one of the most widely distributed service today, operating out of about 55, 60 countries. Uh, but we are a very, very curated, uh, I'd say sort of super premium, edgy, provocative content, uh, platform, right? We are very sort of handcrafted in that sense. 
Uh, and I think we are almost like the HBO of linear world, right? In the linear world, when you have the GCs and the fat bundles, yeah. HBO came saying, hey, by the way, you know, while you'll all have the fat bundles, this is an interesting premium content add-on a la carte, right? True. And we're kind of like that, right? While you'll all, you know, people will have their own, you know, Disney's and Netflix and all of that, which by the way, interestingly for us, I think a lot of these GC sort of, as a, as a surrogate word, I think sort of mass platforms, I think are largely sort of going after the family audiences, right? Uh, we are sort of the provocative, super premium edgy content for really the adult universe. Uh, yeah. So I think, I, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, so I mean, like I said, we, we kind of, as a surrogate, like I said, it's a, we're almost like the HBO of OTT in most markets we are. Uh, we're like an interesting add-on for adult universe looking for interesting content. Super, but I think, I think that's, a, that's, a good, good, that's a good positioning. Uh, in fact, uh, as people see, we, we release a media outlook every year for next five years, a rolling five-year outlook. Last year report that we had released, actually, uh, yeah, last year, in that we had spoken a lot about uh, what media companies should, be do, should do to find a niche and yet be relevant at scale. So what we see a lot of times is that, you know, a lot of media companies are able to find the relevancy and, and the niche. But uh, to take that relevancy to relevancy at scale, you know, uh, is where the real muscle power and the real testing the water really, you know, uh, comes in. So, so you guys have a terrific India first year in Indian market with the partnerships, you know, syndicated content with the telcos. That is a great strategy, in my opinion. You know, uh, from, a, from a consumer point of view, they have got accustomed to watch the kind of content that you deliver. So content, you know, the old saying in media, the content is king can never go away. So, so once I have been, once I've tasted the blood, maybe not a, not a first blood of Rambo, but once I've tasted the blood, I would go for it. You know, if, if it takes me from just a telco syndicated platform to maybe a direct to consumer uh, property, maybe, you know, you're a better place. So now coming to the, you know, the most awaited uh, uh, part of the discussion, you said November is, or maybe sometime in the future, soon we are going to launch our direct-to-consumer uh, Lionsgate Play app in India. I, by the way, love the name Lionsgate Play a lot. You know, Stars Play is also is equally good, but I love Lionsgate Play. But how do you see, you know, the, it, you know the market in and out. You know, it's a, I won't say we are, it's a cluttered OTT market at, at the top. And if we divide the OTT market into maybe premier tier and tier two and tier three players, you know, uh, it's a, it's a, you know, 35 to 40 plus the numbers keep changing so fast these days. OTT players, everybody, you know, right from the from the from the local strength of Hoi Chait in, in Bangla or or the newly launched AHA in uh, let's say in, in Telugu mm -hmm. to the you know the, the global players of Netflix and the Indian giant of Hotstar on the back of you know cricket and now doing everything else along along with that. How do you see, you know, uh, is that going to be a how do you see that race forward? Are, are you are you already rolled up your leaves, uh, you know, sleeves, and uh, you know it's an uphill task, or uh, how do you see it? So I mean, you you always have to roll up your sleeve. It's it's uh, it's always an uphill task. Look, no yeah. matter what stage you are in, uh, there are no free lunches. Right? But um, I think our take on the market is slightly different. Uh, I think when people talk about OTDs in India. Uh, I, I personally find it a little strange. People get a little overwhelmed with very short amount of data, very short amount of period, right? Mm. Uh, to us, this is practically a two, two and a half year old industry. I, I think yes. uh, while, you know, it was ingested about five, six years back, really the growth has come in in the last two years, right? Yeah. Um, and if you break down sort of risk, and, and that's the beauty of knowing your context and where you want to fit in, right? Uh, if you start breaking down the numbers, you'd argue they're probably 40, 50 OTT platforms. But you'd also have to argue they're probably nothing more than 10 that you actually know the names of, maybe 12. Uh, you're, you know, a specialist in media industry, you study in and out. Uh, my bet is you probably won't be able to name more than 15 as well. I agree. So, totally. so one is in terms of just how many relevant OTT companies are there. Uh, the second is how many of them are AWOD versus SWOT, right? Uh, because a lot of them are also AWOD. 
uh, I think from our point of view, the way we look at it is, Raman, there are probably about six or seven escort companies. Mm. Um, and look, we, you, like I said, you know, we we essentially world over stand for really premium, very urban, very edgy, provocative content, right? Uh, to our mind, the only three, there, there are probably only three players in Indian market uh, that have formed the perception in the audience base for premium content, right? Uh, it's it's probably you know at this point limited to Netflix Prime and uh, and Disney Hotstar. True. Uh, uh, I think a lot of other players do what what I'd say a little sort of TV plus quality content, uh, and they're probably also catering to different audiences, right? And maybe mm. you know maybe they have different objectives. So from from our point of view. Uh, this is an interesting point of entry into the market where, you know, it's sort of been invested into a scale where I think that it is a real industry today than it was ever before. Uh, but the number of players are not actually that many. You, you know, you look at US, for example, uh, a complete sort of, you know, antithesis of India, 10 plus years old industry, uh, probably about 10 large players. Uh, or I'd say 10 very large players. Uh, and in spite of 10 very large players, there are probably three or four very large players launching as we speak this year, right? Uh, yeah. So, you know, from that point of view, I think we're still at uh, early stages of growth from a market point of view. Uh, and, and, you know, so we, we are quite, uh, you know, I personally am quite excited about the timing of this launch. Uh, and we've lived through this journey, you know, again, going back to my last sort of, Career. I think at the time we launched Videocon, uh, we had the same set and it's it's funny how sort of life goes in full circle. We had the same question that came up every time. You know, I, 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 is this already overcrowded? Are you late, early? And we said, look, it, it all comes down to catching the growth at the right time of the curve. Yeah, I think that's that I would totally agree with the two large points that you made. I think fundamentally, the industry is still maturing, you know, it's still just about, it's, it's even, not even maturing, you know, the industry is still kind of growing at a nascent uh, stage right now. Two, two and a half years, as you rightly said, is, is, is spot on. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you have you have a niche of content that, uh, you know, you, you kind of uh, bring on that. So I think, I think we, we really, I certainly uh, wish you, uh, you know, the best of the luck to launch it. We are very keenly waiting to see uh, how it launches the kind of uh, the marketing campaigns and all, you know, the, the subscription acquisition strategies. I would have loved to get into more deeper discussion on how do you really see yourself going into 100 million subs base? Or you might say that we don't even need 100 million, you know, we know our niche, we know what we, the kind of money that we want to make, the paying subscribers and all. So I think, I think it's a good timing. It's a good space to be in. Uh, you got a great content. Uh, I'll just uh, maybe move, move to, uh, you know, some of the other related discussions around that. Uh, between the two, by the way, the syndicated content on telcos and once you launch the direct to consumer, are your strategies going to shift a little bit, uh, or you are going to be equally focused on, on on both? I know it's a it's it's a it's a difficult question. Uh, yeah. Would you like uh, subscribers to move from a telco based subscriber to really direct? Not uh, Raman, I, mean, I mean, we believe as much as content is the king, uh, we do also believe distribution is king maker. So. You have been a distribution guy for, for so long. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's that's my legacy. So, I, I you mm -hmm. know, I, I, we value both the things, really. Mm -hmm. uh, we love our partnerships with telcos. Uh, we love our partnership with uh, the broadband guys now, extended from telcos to broadband. Uh, and we'll continue to partner with people in interesting ways that allows us to reach customers in more effective ways, that allows us to catch customers at a point of their comfort and convenience. I'll pick uh, one of the example on that point. I'm glad you brought it up. You know, you guys did a live stream on Facebook uh, for a COVID thing. A very, very, it's, it's a great experiment, a great initiative. I wouldn't call it an experiment, a great initiative, a uh, great cause, and, and, and a great partnership, you know, between uh, Landscape content and Facebook. How was the reaction? How was the response uh, on that from the consumer? Uh, I mean, of course, that was purely a sort of social. Yeah. Uh, cause social relevance you know we want to do in whatever small little way we could uh mm. and see you know do whatever little we could do in our bit but you know we love these partnerships uh you know of course the movies were very very well received mm. we had probably uh 10x the number of people who saw it in theaters 
watch it live uh, wow. and uh, you know those are great sort of, like i said i mean and and that also is sort of goes back to the ethos of lions gate ramen you know we are as a studio we are very very happy to collaborate uh work with partners in sort of win win ways um you know anything that sort of trade 1 plus 1 3 we are very very happy to sort of experiment and look at various models yeah so But, uh to answer the question i think uh, different modes will you know lions gate play of course our app will become sort of the home to lions gate play in totality Mm-hmm. Uh, that the experience it aims to deliver but yeah in different ways and forms we'll continue to experiment with collaborations in different ways uh, yeah. and i don't I, and i don't think any of our models will ever be towards uh, you know the classical sense of syndication i think all, yeah. all our models are always going to be in the sense of saying how do we create it easier and convenient for the cons- consumer Uh, and in, in a model that allows us to sort of also share the economics of that whole model, because at the end of the day, you know, we are in an OTT business, we are not in content syndication business. True, true. I think I I, I would agree. I'll pick a quick question. You know, anonymous. They I wish they have, they would have named over there. Uh, they ask that you know the dubbing of the content in multiple in, you know uh, languages does it dilute the brand equity and charm of premium original content? So brand not equity. At all. not at all i mean uh, and we have so many examples of that right i think in the last uh, i i'd probably credit theaters for being ahead of the curve on this right mm. i think in the last 4 5 years pretty much every big movie that's come out has come out in multiple multiple languages right mm. uh, yeah. and disney in fact has taken it to a next level when you know i think lion king and you know all the infinity movies marvel movies that have come out they we even had big indian stars actually do the dubbing for them so mm. uh, i think making it and and this is a very and and you know india is uh, I, i think one of the problem we have is with our ma- sort of vast landscape and language and cultures we tend to forget that the way i think and experience and my sort of group of circle is not necessarily representation of india right i know very true yeah uh, how how we perceive ourselves to be by others doesn't always have to be the way they perceive and you know the the reality is these movies are going to be available in all languages of course including the original english language uh, it's to make it convenient for consumers to watch it in the language they feel comfortable with mm-hmm. uh, and you know we pride in giving that comfort and convenience to consumers so uh, you know the i i see no dilution around that and i think that's something we've seen been done for years uh, as ott we are just taking a lead on now something that we've seen and experienced in theaters for a long time yeah do we do we also get to see some short format content in in your plans short format content in the sense of uh, the youtube snacking snacking 7 minute content short stories very short not uh, uh, not necessarily uh, nothing in the horizon right now uh, yeah. we are like i said a premium content as what company typically yeah. i shouldn't say never uh, you should never say never but yeah. you know generally our belief is that you know for premium content for people to feel inclined to pay subscription hard earned money uh, you need some sort of minimum duration budget scale uh, especially as a company if you're providing to pro- you know give cinema scale content uh, generally we haven't looked at sort of uh, formats less than sort of half an hour 25 mm-hmm. minutes half an hour uh and there aren't really too many companies who've experimented with that 7 8 minute uh i think the only company that's tried doing it at some scale was quibi in us uh you know and and that's been a struggle but uh so far we have sort of tried keeping a distinction this sort of distinction in what i'd say is user generated time limit and yeah. sort of time limit but never say never you know you never right right i'm 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 actually so getting so keen to get into a longer discussion but uh, unfortunately you know the clock always uh, hits us i do want to pick one more question on the list that i have in front of me again anonymous attendee uh essentially the question is how do we bring in global outlook to a market unless the, so what the person is asking is unless we collaborate with the international player you know this is a challenge so what steps should one take to bring the learnings from the global market now it's a very general question but because i'm picking up the question because it relates to the theme global outlook global strategies would you want to leave some tips on that note yeah, i think I, i mean i while 
I, I, I'm not sure what was the specific intent of the question, but I, I'd say two things on that. I think one is uh, one is just the relevance of global players. Uh, I think building a content pipeline and scale takes a lot of time, right? Yeah. Um, and to that extent, uh, I think the global content pipeline is of immense importance, right? Uh, this after lit, I, I think putting in almost five years, some of the largest OT platforms in India are now able to churn out probably, you know, 10, 12, 13 series in a year. Hmm. So it, this is a very time consuming process, right? And it'll take even more longer to build a library, not just uh, new shows. So there so, are a lot of, a lot of OTT players today, you know, you put a subscription money in, in, in about two weeks, you will say I've consumed everything that they have to offer. What do I do now? So I think that's one in terms of just sort of the relevance of global content and players from the pipeline point of view. But the second is I think OTT changes the whole dynamics, isn't it? I think to me, in an Indian market, there are three, four transformational changes it brings. We've the linear world is very language cohort driven sort of ecosystem. Yeah. Whereas I think the OTT is a very genre cohort driven system, right? You don't really care about the language as much saying, hey, I'm an action, I like action or I like thrillers, I like horror. You become a little more agnostic to languages you, so it changes the dynamics from language cohort ecosystem to genre cohort, right? Uh, and to that extent, I think the distinction between sort of the global and the local becomes that much more thinner and irrelevant. Yeah, I and also the mood part of it. You know, if you look at uh, we, we did ethnographic study on you know a lot of personas. We keep doing that. You can't fix a consumer even with a genre also because you know I might I might be in a mood for some fun right now. I might be that, that genre. What I'm saying is genre. You're saying is mood. It basically depends yeah, on what kind of stuff I'm going to watch, yeah. rather than what language do I want to watch it in. Right. Exactly. Uh, exactly. The second is it change, transforms the economics of the consumer definition, right? For the, mm -hmm. for the longest time, my consumer definition was a household. Yeah. My consumer definition is now an end consumer. And that suddenly means instead of 170 or, or realistically maybe 110, 100, from 110 household, I'm looking at suddenly 600 million smartphones and individual users, right? So yeah. uh, I think all of these transformational changes to my mind are slightly more important the way economics of business works. Uh, the global and the local content is really about two things. Uh, it's about having enough pipeline of great quality content. Uh, yes. And it's about bringing the best of all, you know, all over the world. Uh, and to that extent, I hope that uh, the reverse is true as well. You know, hopefully all the Indian exciting content that we have planned for next year is something that we can take back to, you know, our own 55, 60 countries, international markets as well. You know, there's no reason... That would be a good uh, strategy, you know, which is uh, in, in, inside out uh, in the future. So on that yeah. note, Rohit, uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, for being on this uh, quick fireside chat. And I think the timing couldn't be better for you guys to launch a uh, direct to consumer. You know, everybody, whether it is Geo or Google, everybody's talking about launching, a, making that, you know, low cost, good, solid smartphone a reality now, you know. So it's a matter of time. The expansion in the market will will happen exponentially as we go forward to the next 12 months. So, so all well, the best. I think the next wave of growth that we're going to see is now the expansion of smartphone to smart TVs. Correct. Whether through devices or original smart TV, either ways. I think yeah. in my in my you know my bet is in the next three years the next big thing is going to be really content going to the TV, which is really the end destination, the the true hope. Yeah, so both I would say content on the last screen as well as content on the go, and yeah, both kind of you know always connected, coming together. So thank you so much, Rohit. Uh, wonderful talking to you, and uh, and thank you, uh, Ed Gali. Thank you, Varun DJ, for having us on the panel. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank guys. Thank you, Rohit sir. Thank you, Raman sir, for joining us for this session. It was a scintillating discussion, and uh, it's always good to hear about India's uh, the opportunity in India as a global entertainment market and. Also, the export, the discussion to have is what is the export opportunity and to build our software.